Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to Thriving Thursdays. I am your host, Evangelist Tabitha Beverly, and I am thrilled to be with you on this afternoon. I know that we have all faced many obstacles in our way, but I'm here to tell you that you shall overcome you shall pursue and you shall recover it all. You shall pursue, you shall overcome and you shall recover it all. I'm reminded of a story about David whenever he was anointed to be king, but Saul was still reigning into the seat. Saul was reigning on the throne. And because Saul had the seat, he decided that he wanted to take David's life because he wanted to protect the throne. And even though the Lord had delivered Saul unto David's hands, David said unto himself, I shall not touch the Lord's anointed. So we knew that David did not engage into touching Saul because he would not touch the Lord's anointed. So David began to flee to the Philistines where they gave him Ziglag to the wedding. And that's what we're going to be dealing with today on first Samuel chapter 30. We're going to work the text this afternoon. And the title of this is you shall recover it all. You have to pursue, you have to overtake and you shall recover in the passenger scripture, David and his soldiers, they're coming back from a battle. And as they get back, they realize that our homes has been burnt down. We've smelled the smoke. We smell the fire. Our women, our children, our cattle, everything is gone. There's nobody to shout of our good praises. We're not coming back to our wives. We're not coming back to our children. We're not coming back to a hot meal, but we're coming back to a place of desolation. Everything is gone. And right now, the men are looking at themselves and they're, they're Within themselves, they have got a groaning, they have got a painting because they don't see their wives, they don't see their children, and they don't see their sons. So now their pain is producing an anger, and they're all mad at David. They're looking to stone David in verse 6. I'm working the text, and we're going to text together. Just bear with me. I'm taking you on the ride because I'm letting you know this afternoon that you shall recover all. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, you shall recover all. And in verse 6, they're all have gathered together and they're getting ready to stone David because they said, hold on. Have we not been with David? This have not happened. Uh, hold on. If we wouldn't have been with him, this is because of him that has happened because why? We all know that David is a giant slayer and because he had dealt with the Amalekites, the Amalekites waited till the men was off at battle and they decided to come into Ziklag and invade the camp. Uh, they decided to take every woman, every child, every son, every daughter they decided to take all the cattle because they thought if we can do all these, we can control David. And the scripture reads and it say that even though David heart was in despair, even though David heart was in a place of grievement, he began to give honor to the Lord. He began to delight himself in the Lord. He began to encourage himself in the Lord because I claim about to tell you that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, if you can only encourage yourself in the Lord, you shall recover it all, even in the midst of the situation. And even though now the very men that was his camaraderie, the very men that he walked in battle with, they're now looking at him, whispering about how they want to stone him. Because why? Grief will make the very people that were with you turn their backs on you. Grief will make people change. They'll be singing of your good praises and then the next minute they're saying, stone him, stone him, crucify him. He's not with us. He have changed. Why is he in our lives? We no longer like him. And even though David was grieved and his heart was grieved in his spirit, he decided to have a conversation with the Lord. He decided to comfort himself in the Lord. I have to believe that whenever David has sung those hymns unto the Lord, it came from a place of grief. It came from a play, a painful place. Many of his sorrow moments had made him relate himself into the Lord. It made him look unto the Lord for his strength because he knew where his help come from. He knew that my help cometh from the Lord. So he began on verse seven to tell the priest to bring him the ephod because why I need to get a hold to God and I need to see what the Lord is saying concerning this matter. And this is where we're going to read in verse eight. And David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? 
shall I overtake them? And then he answered him. Who answered? The Lord answered. David asked the Lord two questions. Shall I pursue after them? Shall I overtake them? Because Lord, I need to know. If I pursue them, will I also overtake them? And the reason why I'm talking to you, God, because if you're not in the answer, and if I pursue on my own, Lord, I may become a casualty at war. So, Lord, I don't want to do this out of my own self. But, Lord, I need to hear you. And the Lord answered and said, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fall, recover all. Sometimes so many things happen in our lives and because of the smoke, because of the situation, because of the desolation, we no longer see God in the midst of it. We can hear the chatter of the people that's whispering about us. We can hear the ones that one walk close with us saying, crucify. I don't like her. I don't like him. I don't like what's going on. And even though we may be in the hot seat, I stopped by to tell you, if you just ask the Lord, Lord, shall I pursue? Lord, shall I go back and get the degree, God? God, you told me to go back to school, God. And God, I didn't listen to the prophet when he gave the word, God. Shall I pursue God? Will I be prospering in it, God? God, you told me to start the business, God. And God, I didn't start the business. God, huh? but God, if you bring it back to me now, God, huh? can I be successful in it, God? Huh? God, you told me to write the book, God, huh? and God, I didn't write the book, God, huh? but God, should I do, God? Huh? Would you still cause me to be prosperous in it, God? Huh? Would you can give me the publishing company, God? Huh? God, you told me to buy the house. Huh? You told me to go to the car lot huh? and get the car, God. Huh? God, I didn't move, God. Huh? When you told me to move, God, huh? But God, I'm consulting you now, God. Huh? Because God, I allowed my fear, God. Huh? God, I allowed the things that was going on around me, God. Huh? God, to put me in the situation, God. Huh? But God, I'm asking you now, God. Huh? Oh, God, if I pursue it, God, huh? would I come back victorious in it, God? Huh? And if only do I pursue it, God, huh? would you make me the lender and not the borrower? Huh? Above and not beneath. Huh? The head and not the tail. Huh? God, would you make me an overcomer? And because David trusted the Lord and he knew the Lord and he began to get the ephod and talk to the Lord because he needed to hear the word from the Lord. Not only did God tell him to pursue, but he told him that he was going to overtake and he was going to recover all, not some, but all. Sometimes we get into situations in our lives and we don't feel like we're going to recover anything because why? We feel like, well, I gave it up. I gave up the dream. I gave up my chances of going be the doctor. I have got up in age. I don't know if I can do what the Lord told me to do. He told me that I was going to have a baby, but now I'm strictly in age. But Sarah, he told the same thing to you and you laughed, but you brought forth. Sometimes we don't pursue because of fear. But when you put the pursuit in God, you shall recover it all, not some, but all. And as we go down into the passenger scripture, we will see that those men that was hurting went with David. Those men that was going through because of their families, they went with David and they went on pursuit because why? It's one thing to hear from the law, but it's another thing to act upon what God is telling you to do. David just didn't hear God. But he acted upon what God told him to do. Because God, I know if you telling it to me, I'm going to come back victorious, God. And even though, God, it may look like a desolation situation. If you said it, you going to do it. And you going to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Verse 9. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him. And they came to a brook Bashard, where those that were left behind stayed. They were left behind. And we will see who was all left behind. You know that they started off 600. Somebody say, everybody that start with you ain't always going to finish with you, but that's okay. 
Sometimes God will got to remove certain people out your life, but that's okay. When you know that God is sending you on an assignment, you have to lock and load and do the assignment and whomever get left behind is all right, baby. Sometimes you can't take everything with you. Sometimes you can't take everybody with you. But if you know that, you know that the Lord tell you to go, you got to go because you know it's in the instructions that you're going to be the overcomer. Verse 10. But David pursued he and 400 men. We started off 600 men strong, but now we're 400 men, meaning 200 men was left behind. Because they were so faint that they could not go over the brook. Some people can't always go the duration that you go. But you got to trust God more than the ones that you trust. Sometimes God will separate you from the very one that you putting all your trust in. Because you say, well, if sister go, then I know it's going to be all right. Well, if my pastor go, then I know it's going to be all right. If mama go, then I know it's going to be all right. Lord, if my husband go, then I know it's going to be all right. But the Lord said, baby, sometimes the places that I'm taking you, I got to separate you from the one that you leaning on because I need you to have a cliff thinking that everything that I got lined up for you is for you. Because why? I said it. And if I said it, I'm about to make it good. So sometimes I got to leave the very person that you're looking to to do the assignment behind you so that you can move forward, baby. Because instead of trusting me, you're trusting your counterpart. Now. But I got to bring about a separation so that my will will be done. Hallelujah. Oh, it's about to get good, y'all. David is about to recover all. I don't want to spoil it for you. But I feel a leaping in my spirit. Huh? Because somebody been feeling like they've been in a place of desolation. You've been feeling like you have to give up on the dream. Huh? You've been feeling like you could not go on. Huh? But I'm here to tell you, if you pursue her, huh? not only if you pursue it, huh? you going to overtake it. Huh? Not only if you overtake it, huh? you going to recover it all. Huh? I don't know wherever you are. Huh? Right now, wherever you're listening from. Her, but I get it in my sanctified spirit. Her, the Lord, I thank you right now her, that you're about to close me her, to recover everything, God, her, that I gave up. Her. I'm going to pursue it, Lord, her, like never before, God, her, and I'm going to come back victorious. Her. I've been wondering why some people have to leave out of my life. Her. I've been wondering why so many things have been changing. Her. I've been wondering why the very ones that have been singing up my good praises, her, now they want to crucify me. Her. They want to stone me. Huh? They don't want to see me in a high seat. Huh? And I've been wondering what's been going on. Huh? Because baby, huh? he's shifting you to pursue everything huh? that you thought you lost. Huh? And because people don't have the like mind like you, huh? he has to sometimes move them out the way. Huh? So that you will know that it's I said the Lord huh? that's about to cause you to move into higher. Huh? It is I said the Lord huh? that's about to cause you to recover all. Huh? And because you keep on listening to the outsiders, huh? And because you won't hawk it into me, uh, I got to break about the separation. Uh, I know that it's hurting you. Uh, I know that it's groaning you. Uh, I know that it's paining you. Uh, but if you just pursue what I told you to pursue, uh, if you just do what I called you to do, uh, not only would you be victorious, uh, but you shall recover all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 11. And they found an Egyptian in the field. Somebody say, <laughs> the Lord is about to make the enemy of your enemy your friend. Hallelujah, Jesus. And he brought and they brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat. I don't know how long David them has been along this journey pursuing after the Amalekites. But when God is sending you on the journey, he make provision for you on the journey. <laughs> he knew that he was going to need the Egyptian huh, to meet David, huh, to tell David huh, where they holding his wives, huh, where they holding the children, huh, and where they holding the sons. Huh. Sometimes if you pursue huh, what God has called you to pursue, huh, he'll leave somebody behind huh, to tell you exactly where you have to go. Huh. We'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Huh. Somebody will tell you, hey, hold on. Huh. You looking for a car. 
uh, if you go down now to yada yada this this and uh, yada yada that that uh, you ask for this man uh, and he gonna help you uh, I heard you was looking to buy a house uh, well you know I know somebody uh, when God has set you up for greatness uh, he gonna Put the person in your path uh, that's going to lead you in the situation uh, that's about to cause you to be victorious. Uh, this Egyptian man, uh, he couldn't go with the troops. Uh, he was faint at heart. Uh, and David them had to feed him. Uh, and because David fed the man, uh, because he was full of compassion, uh, because he had bowels of compassion, uh, the Egyptian man uh, began to tell David, uh, oh, I could tell you uh, what the Malachites are. Uh, Oh, I can tell you where they got your women at, where they got your children at, where they got your cattle at, where they got your gold at. All you got to do is listen to me and I'm going to take you to the place. That's where you know that God is doing the work because he sets it up line upon line and precept upon precept. And even though you may be faint at heart. God is causing your enemies of your enemies to be your friends. I stopped by this afternoon to encourage you and to let you know if you pursue it, you shall have it. You shall overtake it and you shall recover it all. It's been a dry season for a lot of us. We have lost loved ones. We have lost dear friends. We have lost so many people that we hold dear and near to our heart. If you keep on reading the passage of scripture because of time, I'm not permitted to go, but I'll let you know what happens. Not only did David recover all, but just like the Egyptian man told him, he was able to catch up to the Amalekites where they were drinking and they were having them a good time. But somebody say all. Oh. All was not touch, not the wives, not the children, not the sons, not the cattle. They had it all intact because we give too much credit for the devil. The enemy don't always know how you're coming. Some things the Lord don't let him see. The Amalekites couldn't see that David was coming. And because David had asked the Lord, he recovered all. And if you read further along the story, even the ones that was left behind when they was coming back to go back into the camp after they recovered their wives and their children, after they pursuing came out victorious, the 200 that was left behind, the others begin to say, oh, we're not going to help them. We're not going to give them anything. They didn't help us. They didn't come. So why should we shell? And David said, oh, no. We're going to give unto them. We're going to allow them to have. Sometimes it's not for you to get mad at the one that can't come with you. Because God is putting you on a special assignment. But if it be the will of the Lord, it's not for you to get mad at that person, but still pour into that person. Because why? They was a part of the process. <laughs> they was a part of your elevation. There was a part of your promotion. There was a part of your right to get everything that you need. They play some significance in your life. And even though they don't go into battle with you, you gonna come out victorious. It's not for you to be mad at them, but it's for you to tell them about the goodness of Jesus. It's for you to tell them that my Savior lives. He is the redeemer of my soul. When I thought that I was lost, he found me along the way. Side, huh? When I thought my child was going to be incarcerated for years, huh? he sent my son home. Huh? He cleaned my daughter from addictions and drugs. Huh? He, what you can't tell me, huh? what my God cannot do. If you pursue it, you shall overtake it. And if you overtake it, you shall recover all. Oh, we thriving on Thursday. And I just want to shake your fire for the rest of the weekend to let you know that you shall recover all. Go back and pursue the dream. He gave it to you. Write the book. He gave it to you. If you're the usher and you know that he's called you to be the head usher, get back in position. He told you where to be. And if God 
is with you. Who could be against you? Before I close, I just want to leave you with a powerful prayer this afternoon to take with you along the journey. I want to strengthen you along the journey. I want to tell you that you can make it in this journey. You shall pursue it in this journey. And if you do it with the Lord, you're going to come out victorious. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, God, I'm asking right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, God, that you'll give us the mind of the overcomer, God, God, that we pursue, God, God, what you gave us to pursue, God, God, that you're going to cause us to recover it all, God, oh, God, every person, God, God, that's happened to this video, God, cause them to lock and load to the key, God, God, that you have given, God, this afternoon, God, God, that we shall recover, we shall shall overtake uh, and we shall pursue God. Uh, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, God, uh, strengthen them for the journey, God. Uh, let them see, God, uh, that every fire that comes in their life, God, uh, it doesn't come to make them bitter, uh, but it comes to make them better. Uh, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, strengthen them right now, God, uh, everywhere they hurt, God, uh, everywhere they've been aching, God, uh, everywhere it's been a dry place, God, uh, and God, you bring them about the mind like David, huh? that if Lord you tell me to go, huh? I go. Huh? If you tell me to overtake, huh? I'll overtake. Huh? Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. God healed them, God touched them, God, right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, we just thanking you, Lord, for thriving thirst, this God. God, we thank you for our chief apostle, Apostle Amos L. Horton, God, for the mandate, God, that he had bestowed upon us, God. Oh, God, carry your people, God. Oh, God, and take them higher, Lord. Oh, God, strengthen us now, God, as we lock the load together. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We are better together. I'm so excited about thriving Thursdays. Tell somebody about thriving Thursdays. Spread the word. That we are thriving throughout Thursdays. Pursue, overtake, and recover it all. You be blessed in Jesus' name until next time. I love you with the love of Jesus. Amen.